Phoenix beat Jeff Jarrett with an inside cradle off of a figure four attempt to retain the international title. And uh, Phoenix, this guy is like... So last week when he did that big dive and wiped out uh, Moxley, uh, he hurt his back landing on Moxley's head. And uh, he almost didn't get cleared because of his back, but he got cleared. And then he took a suplex over the barricade and landed sideways and screwed up his back again. And he could barely walk for like three minutes. And he finally kind of got back into the groove and started hitting his springboards and everything like that. But this was this guy is hurting bad. So I don't know if he's going to lose the title to Nick Jackson. I don't even know if Nick Jackson wants the title. They said he's only done like four singles matches in the entire time he's been in... Uh, in AEW, so I'm not sure the guy's hankering to do a bunch of singles matches, but uh, this Phoenix is hurting. Should so. have called an audible again. I would have loved to have seen Jeff Jarrett with that international title. Jeff Jarrett is the international champion. That would be awesome. Then we had an amazing video package of Cole and MJF. They stole MJF's dad's boat, and uh, MJF is, like, Cole's on crutches, and they're fishing, and... Uh, MJF's kind of angry at old Cole for uh, being on the phone with Roddy for so long. And they're drinking beer, and then and he goes, I'm going to go get some more beers for us. And he walks over, and he opens it up, but then whoosh, puts on the ring. And the crowd gasps. This is it. But then Cole says, you know, you didn't bring me out here to hit me with a ring and throw me the drink, did you? And MJF goes, ah, no, no, what are you talking about? He got caught, so he sits down. And, and Cole tries to explain, you know, it's okay to have more than one friend, which is an alien concept to MGF. He didn't even know it was okay to have a friend three months ago. Now he's told you can have more than one. He goes, man, you know, that's not for me, but I, I get it. If you want to have more than one friend, I mean, that's cool. And then Cole suddenly gets a bite, and they, they work hard to reel in this fish. But it is not a fish. It is Captain Insano on an inflatable duck. This crowd howled. <laughs> and then he gets on the boat. And uh, they all drink beer. And uh, I actually thought this was going to lead to Captain Insano being MGF's partner against the uh, the Righteous, but no. He didn't get the match. The way it was edited made it even better. A, a scene out of the It was Sopranos so good. This was so to, great. Uh, Tony and Paulie Walnuts on the boat. People who watch The Sopranos, that's exactly what MJF did. Then uh, Don and Takeshita. Come to the ring. Donna Takeshita? Don and Takeshita. Oh. And uh, and they, they go to Ibushi's dojo, <laughs> which was a, a scene straight out of uh, Yoji Anjo going to Hickson's dojo in 1994. <laughs> and, man, that guy got uh, wrecked. Mm. But anyway, uh, who was it in Ibushi's dojo that got beat up? I got in trouble oh. for calling him a young boy. I forget. But, I'm sorry. Um, the fact of the matter is the the uh, the production crew uh, did refer to him as a young boy, but anyway, uh, he's explaining that that uh, Bushi's not there yet. So Don slapped him so hard that apparently he knocked him silly, and then Ibushi shows up and he's beaten up Takeshita, and Don tries to hit him with an umbrella, didn't work. And then uh, with an umbrella, this disgusting Takeshita, who's also disgusting now, he ends up hitting Ibushi with a kettlebell, and they put a beating on him. So apparently he's going to be okay to make it to the the show on Sunday, but he's coming in injured. They're going. They went to Japan to take this guy out. And then Sammy cuts a promo about how selfish Jericho is, and they vow to take out Ibushi, Jericho, and Omega on Sunday. We had a Ricky Starks post match promo. And Wheeler Yuta shows up, and they set up a match for Sunday. And you know what it's time to do with this Ricky Starks fella? Pull the What's trigger. That? Yeah. I'm done with the 50-50. Like, if he's mm -hmm. going to be one of your guys, he needs to beat this guy, Let's and he go. needs to keep moving. Let's get this thing done. Then we had Nick Jackson, Brian Cage, and Claudio. And speaking of Nick Jackson, this guy shows up at the building thinking he's not going to work because nothing's been advertised for him. And apparently they told him, we got an idea for you. And so he had to, like, find gear. Wait a second. Isn't that what Vince would do to his vice presidents? I wouldn't think TK would do that to his, but well, here we go. Apparently My he had God. an idea. 
And so it's Nick Jackson, Brian Cage, and Claudio, and Nick Jackson won. And so it is Nick Jackson versus Phoenix next week, which was one of the greatest singles matches in the first year of the promotion. But now Phoenix is just a wreck. So I still expect it to be quite great, but um, that's next week on Dynamite. And this match was fun. This was a really fun match, including uh, Claudio gave uh, Brian Cage the giant swing. Yeah. And this Brian Cage is a big dude. And uh, he did not swing him slow. He swung this guy so fast. I love this match. Yeah, you notice, though, he was done. After 10, that was it, and even Claudio took a little break for once. Then MGF and Cole came out for a promo. Cole's explaining his his foot is destroyed. And Max notes that uh, you are not vacating these titles. He goes, you actually got me to wrestle twice in one night. And I am not wrestling twice in one night just to vacate these belts to the righteous. So he offers to face him in a handicap match. And then Roddy comes out, Adam! He says, I need you more than ever right now. It's an emergency. And Cole's stuck between a rock and a hard place. And MGF says, hey, I learned a lesson on that boat. Go do your thing. And I'll be waiting for you when you get back. And the kingdom is screaming at him to hurry up. Cole goes, dude, I got a broken foot. He hobbles up the ramp. And then out comes a switchblade. And uh, I don't got time in this segment to recap this 45-minute promo that these two guys had. But at the end of the day, MGF basically says, like, you're, uh, you know, you're a vanilla guy who's got a lot of things. And if you strip it away, you're, you're very bland. You're good, but you're no MJF. And uh, Jay White's argument is that uh, you've gone soft. You've, and that makes MGF very angry, the idea that he's gone soft. So he wants a fight, but uh, Jay White bails. And so this, this I think, is a, uh, a longer build towards, uh, I would presume, full gear, but I, I have no idea. I think this should be a full gear pay-per-view main event, but we'll see. Yes. Then we had another great talking segment. Yeah, listen, there was a lot of talking on this show, but I thought there were some great talking segments, and this was one of them. Jim Ross with Darby and Christian. Man, these guys were awesome. This Christian is such a despicable, horrible character, and he's just pushing all of Darby's buttons. And Darby's, he's so furious, he's washing the paint off of his face. And, and essentially, on Sunday, Darby has challenged him he goes, I'm not going to bring Nick Wayne to the ring. I'm going alone. Why don't you go alone without Luchasaurus? And so they're going to do a best of three falls match because Christian thinks, you know, you use all these shortcuts, tables, ladders, chairs. Can you beat me wrestling? We'll find out on Sunday. You were able to enjoy that a lot more than the rest of us because I assume really? the time it, it aired on the West Coast. Oh, they yes. didn't have all the technical issues well, that were, unfortunately, TNTs and not AEWs. If you've TBS. ever listened to the Dave show, because Dave, you know, he lives in Silicon Valley, yes. which means his internet sucks for some bizarre reason. Bizarre. And so every now and then we'll uh, we'll do a show and his, his, uh, his audio gets all garbled and electronic. It actually happened for a while last night. Well, I watched this on YouTube TV, presumably the West Coast feed, and I did not have the issues you guys did, but there were still issues. Like, there, there were a lot of audio issues on this show, but I did get to see the entire thing, and it was very, very good. We had the four-way Orange Cassidy, Matt Jackson, Penta, and Austin Gunn. Another real good match, and, you know, all of the usual four-way stuff, the striking battle, super kick party, even it's a finish. And finally, Orange hits Matt with the orange punch and pins him, setting up the four-way tag for the number one contendership coming up on Sunday. Willow Nightingale versus Julia Hart. And Julia beat her. Uh, she uh, missed the cannonball. Julia hit the moonsault and got the pin. And then Julia puts in her in a finish afterwards. Statlander runs down to make the save. Julia escapes, ends up being... Uh, she hides behind Brody and then got out of there. And, you know, yesterday in Observer Radio, we were talking about this, and we're like, 
What in God's name is up with Willow? She's so over every time she shows up. Like, why is Willow in this position she's in now where she's just like out there doing jobs and just a, another woman on the roster? She won the Owen. And then, mm-hmm. like, we had a couple people really mad going, are you aware she's going for the Ring of Honor women's title? <sighs> Jesus. You know what? I'm not aware because I don't have time to watch Ring of Honor streaming on Honor Club. What I watch is the main show. And as a viewer of, and actually this week, Rampage as well, Dynamite, Rampage, and Collision, it's like, no, I have no idea. All I do is I see Willow Nightingale, who's maybe the most over babyface on the entire women's roster, coming out here and, uh, and getting beaten on right and left. So that's what I see. Yeah, I think we have enough space with all these shows for both Athena and Willow Nightingale, but especially Willow Nightingale. You know, your Owen Hart Cup winner, you know, your former IWGP World Women's Champion, you know her. Then oh, we... by the way, it was uh, Yumi uh, Oh, and Yumi, but, yeah, you know, Another person here noting, by the way, that Willow, was, she had the thing on and it got taken off and she had the eye, mm-hmm. you know, the House of Black eye that leads to somebody turning heel. You have got got to be kidding me dude I, you have got to be kidding me maybe she just got poked in the eye like, you on the way had not be considering I, turning the most popular baby face of all the women heel i i cannot russo rific i i cannot abide that decision well, yumahito imanari by the way was the dojo gentleman uh, the gentleman yes. Bushis, yes well he was treated like a young boy yeah, well. i know that then we had Swerve and Hangman coming out for the contract signing. Excellent promo by Swerve. And, man, this surprise, Hangman. No surprise there. This Hangman, he finally mm-hmm. got to talk about his last year and a half with old CM Punk. Was this his pound of flesh? Kind of, but he, it was just like, you know, he didn't really he didn't really bury CM Punk. He just talked about how miserable he was for the last year and a half when CM Punk was there and he couldn't say anything about the guy. But now that black cloud is lifted. And I'm going to give the fans the best of me. And Swerve says, well, you know, it rains a lot in Seattle. There's going to be a lot of black clouds there. And Hangman says, if you want this spot, you'll have to do what I did. Knock it out of the park every opportunity you get. And uh, if you think you got what it takes to fill my boots, you can't. So Swerve slaps him, signs the contract. And then Hangman rushes in and stabs him with the pen. A stabbing. We haven't had a good stabbing in a while. But, man, we got one yesterday. He stabbed him. Tony, I think, really likes mafia movies. I don't know, though. Well, you know, I've seen a lot of mafia movies where the uh, the main baby face is a cowboy. Well, I, uh, I've been talking about the stabbing in the, the hand with pens and such. And then we had the main event angle where the kingdom... Oops. Presumably the kingdom. They attack old Jay White and then a guy in a devil mask laughs. Hey, if you love this clip... Have I got a deal for you? WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.